Good morning. Please rise. In the name of the Father, out of the Son, out of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Do, O Lord, keep a record of sins. O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either deserve, desire or deserve, pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things that we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and meditation of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Old Testament reading is from the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I've gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. 
Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be like a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. The Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. And Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 50. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. For to the wicked God says, What right have you to recite my statutes, or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline, and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him, and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free reign for evil, and your tongue brings deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was one like yourself. Now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this then, you who forget God. Let us have tear you apart, and there be none to deliver. One who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. The one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve, then He appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then He appeared to James, then to all the Apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. The tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. The one who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, in the parable that Jesus told in our gospel reading today, only one of the men went home justified. Now both men went to the temple to pray, but only one of them was declared to be righteous and acceptable to the Lord. 
They both went to the temple to pray, just as each of us have come here to pray for God's forgiveness and to receive His grace and His blessing. But only one out of the two went home justified. Will the same thing happen here today? Though we have all come here to pray and receive God's grace, will some of us go back to the house unjustified and outside of God's grace in the Lord's eyes? May the Lord grant each and every one of us a humble recognition of our sinful condition. May the Lord keep us from falling into the arrogant thinking so that we don't end up like the Pharisee in the parable. The Pharisee was not justified, even though he thought he was justified. He thought he was right in his conduct and better than the other guy, and it was those very thoughts, thoughts of arrogance and trusting and believing that he himself was an upright man that actually kept him from being justified by God's grace. May God give us a realization that if we are thinking of ourselves as more righteous than others, then we are outside of God's grace. Scripture says no one is righteous. In God's eyes, we are righteous through Christ alone. The Lord, the Lord, He is our righteousness. From the Lord's perspective that we've learned from Scripture, we are all equally beggars before God. Scripture indicates that whoever keeps the whole law but fails in just one point has been guilty of all of it. So if we think of ourselves as more righteous than men in prison who have been convicted of murder but are trusting in Jesus for forgiveness, we will leave here today unjustified. We are trusting in ourselves, thinking that we haven't broken the fifth commandment not to murder and are therefore not in dire need of God's mercy, then we will leave here outside of God's grace. For Scripture indicates that anger and hatred are akin to murder. We continue to think that we are less sinful than those who have succumbed to sexual temptation. If we continue to think that we are less sinful than those who have had an abortion, then we will not leave here justified by God's grace. We are all, all of us are beggars before God. We are beggars who don't deserve God's grace and His blessing any more than Cain did. But just as Satan tempted the Pharisees, so also Satan tempts us. We are tempted to have such pharisaical thinking, not only in the way that we view ourselves, but also in the way that we view our particular generation. Satan would like very much for older generations to think of themselves as more righteous than younger generations, as if the previous generations haven't also sinned in profound ways. Truth is, even in the so-called glory days of the church, the pastors and the people sinned terribly in what they thought and did and what they fail to do, just as you and I sin. Younger generations can also be tempted to think that their generation is more righteous than previous generations as they address issues and work for positive change in areas that have previously been neglected. But when Satan tempts us to think that we or our particular generation is more righteous than another generation, then we are in the same situation that the Pharisee was in. He left the temple outside of God's grace. Scripture addresses such errant thinking. It says, You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. If we think that we or our generation is more righteous on account of what we have done, then we are relying on our own righteousness, our own work, instead of the saving work of Jesus Christ. Such thinking will land us in the same place that the Pharisee was at, separated from God's grace. When we consider the sin of Cain, the sin of murder, we can be tempted to think of ourselves as more righteous than Cain because most of us have never actually bludgeoned or stabbed someone to death. However, people can be convicted of homicide not only for what they did intentionally, but also for what they have done in negligence. 
like someone who is guilty of criminally negligent homicide, we are guilty of neglecting the eternal needs of the lost souls in our community so that they may have eternal life. Like a person who has a life-saving flotation device right there in his hand, but just watches someone drowning without moving a muscle. So are we guilty for not bothering to invite the lost who are drowning in a sea of sin to come and hear the saving gospel of Jesus Christ in church? Amen. Dear friends, the answer to Cain's sarcastic question, am I my brother's keeper, is readily inferred throughout the scriptures. The obvious answer from God's word is this. Yes, we certainly are our brother's keeper. Yes, we really are supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. God would have all the generations in the church humbly working together so that our lost neighbors may have eternal life. Our neglect of eternal lives of those in our community is actually more grievous than the sin of Cain. Jesus said, whoever does not gather with me scatters. Regrettably, we are all guilty of murder according to God's word through anger, hatred, and our neglect to gather lost sheep into the Lord's fold. Like Cain, our sins have made a separation between us and God. We are all children of Adam and Eve. We are all east of Eden, distant from the Lord, distant from the Lord because of what we have done and also because of what we have left undone. So, like the tax collector, we stand far off and beat our breasts saying, God, be merciful to us sinners. We humbly cry out to our gracious God for mercy. And God hears our prayers. For Jesus came not to call the righteous, but sinners like you and me. Praise the Lord who sent His Son, Jesus Christ, who was completely innocent and always looked after the needs of others. He fulfilled the law to love our neighbors as ourselves. He did it perfectly. Jesus cared for the needs of others so much that He was so busy helping other people and caring for their physical and their spiritual needs that he sometimes didn't even have time to eat. No, we have not fulfilled the law to be our brother's keeper. Jesus fulfilled the law on our behalf and laid down his perfect life as an atonement for the sins of the whole world. You are forgiven in Christ Jesus, your Lord. For the Lord, the Lord is your keeper. He will keep your life. Jesus was murdered on the cross so that your sins, including the sins against the fifth commandment, would be taken away. Your sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. No, our sins separate us from God. Now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. God has heard your prayer. He's granted you mercy. God gives mercy and grace even to murderers. God had mercy on Cain, putting a mark on him and preventing him from being killed so that he would have a chance to repent. God also had mercy on Paul after he had actually supervised the murder of St. Stephen. Yes, God has mercy on murderers. He has mercy on Cain. He had mercy on Paul. He had mercy on people like you and me. His mercy for the death of God's Son is a big enough sacrifice to atone for all sin. No matter what sin you have committed, there is forgiveness in Christ Jesus our Lord. The blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. So we approach the table to receive His body and blood for forgiveness, for life, and for salvation. From His fullness, we all receive grace upon grace. God's grace to sinners like us is not in vain. Like with Paul, God's forgiveness and grace has an effect on our lives. Out of gratefulness for the undeserved mercy that we have indeed received, we humble ourselves and work together even harder to help care for the eternal lives of those around us. But it's not we who do the work. But as St. Paul said, it's the grace of God that is within us. For it is God who works in you both to will and work for his good pleasure. To God alone be all the glory. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please stay seated. Could I have the two joining come up, please?
Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. You this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gift that God gave you in your baptism. Yes, I do. You renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways. Yes, I renounce them. You believe in God the Father Almighty, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true. I do. You intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully. I do by the grace of God. You intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit even to death. I do by the grace of God. You intend to continue steadfast in this confession and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it. I do, by the grace of God. You desire to become a member of this congregation. I do. We support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you. I will, with the help of God. Upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate us with, with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing your people to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, enabling them both with heart to believe and with mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, though we remain under a curse and we think of ourselves as better than others and we trust in our own righteousness, blessed are those who trust in you. Grant us such faith that we may all look to you alone for justification, trusting in your grace that comes through the saving work of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, Please bless the work of missionaries everywhere as your servants across the world let down the nets of the gospel. We ask for your particular blessing upon Deanne Gotchener and her work in Ethiopia, Reverend Nathaniel and Emma Jensen and their work in Germany, and Reverend Gustavo and Ruth Maita and their work in Puerto Rico. Bless also our mission work here in our neighborhood and in our school. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, give wisdom and integrity to those serving in positions of authority within our government. Bless the work of those in the legislative, judicial, and executive branches of our government, that they may acknowledge the natural law that has been written on all hearts and conform their governments in submission to your will. Bless also the work of emergency personnel and the members of our armed forces, that we may all live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> We pray for all who are homebound, especially Richard, Pamela, Geraldine, Patricia, and Grace. Give them comfort in the knowledge that they are not alone, but you will never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, have mercy on those who are ill or in need of healing, especially Linda, David, Karen, John, Maria. William, Mary, Jen, Vivian, Janelda, Gary, Dick, Megan, John, Marge, Willie, Carrie, Jim, Bob, Joseph, and James. 
Also those who are in hospice, especially Joyce and Lorraine. Bless them all with strength and faith in their times of need. Bless the work of medical professionals that they may serve as your instruments of healing. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are mourning or grieving, especially the family and friends of Gabrielle Hartwig and the family and friends of Geraldine Stone, that you would bless them with confidence in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, O teacher of all that is pure and right, bless our teachers and their preparations for the coming school year. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord God, look with compassion upon all those who are suffering from hunger, homelessness, poverty, discrimination, reduced employment, or unemployment. Have mercy and take away their sufferings. Move us all to be your instruments of mercy and grace to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, dear Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please write. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. And because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them but all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Stay hard. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
sign up. Given it to death for you. Drink. Let us pray. God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, 
but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Welcome, listeners. We're glad that you could join us. Please stick around. We've got coffee just across the hall, and uh, we'll have Bible study starting here in about 15 minutes. So, at this time, I'd like everyone to look around. If you don't know someone, this is a perfect time to introduce yourself. Really? Oh my goodness. 